So y'all know I love me some Netflix. I'm telling y'all this streaming game is getting crazy. <music> So, <laughs> um, I have, I'm going to be releasing a bunch of videos, which you've already started to see some of them. And just, you know, May, June, already been kind of crazy. And in despite how crazy May and June have been, and I've, I've watched a lot of TV, which I don't usually get to watch a whole lot of TV. But when you're laid up in bed, sometimes that happens, you know. Um, it's funny. I found that in the month of April, when I wasn't laid up in bed, I read a whole lot more than when I was laid up in bed. I watched a lot more. It's weird. If I'm active, I'm reading. If I'm not active, I'm watching. I don't understand it. So <laughs> this is uh, me asking you, have you seen this? So I'm going to start with, I was going to try to do it by streaming network, but I don't think my brain works that way. I'm going to try to remember each show that I've mentioned and let you know what streaming service is on. So, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to start with Baketopia. I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but um, Baketopia is an HBO Max show and it is hosted by um, Rosanna Pansino and I love her, Ro. I've been watching her on YouTube for years. I'm so proud of her. She is um, what I think most people aspire to be when they start like their YouTube channel. They want to, you know, start a little channel and then they just want to explode. And that's what she did. She has her own empire now. She's got her clothing line, her cookbooks, her HBO Max show. You know, she's, 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 she's <laughs> she has made the YouTube dream and she's just really fun to watch. I think she looks like a live action anime character, if that makes any sense. But she's a beautiful person and so her Baketopia show is a lot of fun and my husband and I watched it together and really enjoyed it. So that is an HBO Max show. If you haven't seen it and you like baking shows, I would say check it out. All right, the next thing I'm going to mention is a Disney Plus show and it's, um, I don't think I have the name right here, but it's basically their Animal Kingdom show. It's, it's a documentary series where they take you behind the scenes of Animal Kingdom and Epcot, stuff like that. And so um, I just like it because I like um, animal and nature shows anyway. And so um, I've been to the Disney um, Animal Kingdom like safari once. <laughs> I would love to go back. Um, and so it was just really curious, you know, for me to see kind of all the behind the scenes stuff, the effort they, that they put into um, taking care of their animals and their preservation efforts. So. That's that. What's next on my list? Okay, so here is a Netflix show. So um, I mostly talk about books, <laughs> obviously, and I think uh, I did a review of this back in March, I believe, The Way of the House Husband. I was so excited because it was my first arc of the year. Um, I actually, I think I've read three arcs this year now, but it was the first one that I got, and it was a graphic novel um, arc, and so I just thought, that was just fun for me because it was it was the first time I was approached by the publisher for an arc. Usually I'm contacting them saying, I would like to read an arc, you know. But anyway, so um, it was turned into an anime series on Netflix. And it was funny. What can I say? I mean, I think it, it, it's that type of humor that you either get it or you don't kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I really, I was, I was so excited. My niece actually, she was like, I remember you read that book. She's like, it's on Netflix. You should watch it. So we did. And that was cool. All right. So the next one is a Amazon Prime show. And this is Invincible. So, um, it is a superhero show. It is, excuse me. I noticed that I got a little something sticking out here. Yeah. It's the tag. I don't even know why I'm trying to pretend like I care about my hair right now. Let's get back to the shows. Um, Invincible. It is kind of like um, another Amazon Prime show, which is The Boys. But The Boys is a live action, very adult, very graphic show. Whereas this is an anime, very adult, very graphic, animated. It's not anime. It's animated. And um, it's, it's really good. It was very kind of unexpected um, after you find out what's happening um, in the first episode, you, you, you figure out some things, but there's still some things you're just like, where are they going to go with this? You know, like I'm, I'm excited for the next season. 
So if you like superheroes and you don't mind some of the more adult stuff, think in terms of like the Watchmen or the boys and um, that what Invincible is, only it's not live action, it is animated. Um, some wonderful um, voice work, um, Sandra O oh, is in it. What? What's the, what? See, if I knew as soon as I started thinking about it, I would forget the guy's name, but oh my goodness. He's so great too, and I feel ridiculous that I can't remember his name. Anyway, he um he's he's the guy who in in the in the in the Spider Man movie, he's the one who's always trying to catch Peter Peter Parker. Why is my brain just not working? Uh anyway. <laughs> he's a great actor, wonderful voice work for Omni Man. I'm moving on to the next show. <laughs> um so this is me and my husband being late to every party. That's just how we are now. I was never late for anything until I married that man, and now I'm late for everything. But this is more of a figurative kind of late. You know, people watch things right when they come out, and they talk about them. And when you don't watch them right away, you have to try to avoid spoilers and stuff like that. Luckily for us, a lot of our friends and family don't watch the same stuff we watch. So <laughs> it's okay that we just saw John Wick 3 for the first time. We didn't have any spoilers. It was awesome, you know. Um, so, yeah, we watched John Wick 3, and uh, that's actually a movie, so um, you can probably get that on whatever streaming network. I think we got it on Prime. But, um, so, yeah, we finally saw John Wick 3, really enjoyed it. Um, that kind of movie isn't for everyone. We enjoyed it, so there you go. Um, I think I already mentioned that we were watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier in the last Have You Seen This video that I did completed that series. It was amazing. We watched the, and that's a Disney Plus um, show right there. We watched the Mortal Kombat movie that was released on HBO Max, and it was pretty good. I mean, when you think about how many movies that are based on video games that are actually like made and put out there, anytime you find one that's not horrible, it's pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Um, the very first Mortal Kombat movie that they came out with was pretty good. The second one, I don't know. I feel like somebody was playing a joke on somebody, and we all had to suffer for it. I don't know what. The, I didn't even watch it. I missed it. I've seen clips of it since then, and I'm just like, what in the world happened? Kind of like how I felt with the Street Fighter movie. I love me some Jean-Claude Van Damme, but that Street Fighter movie was awful. So I started talking about Mortal Kombat. So the Mortal Kombat that just came out on HBO Max, it's not a bad movie. You know, there's fanboys and fangirls out there. The thing you have to understand about fanboys and girls is when they love their stuff, they love it so much to the point where they hate it. And I'm not a uh, Mortal Kombat fangirl. So for me, it, it, it was no, I didn't have a problem with it. Good entertainment. Can't wait to see what they're going to do next. Um, the next one is, um, ooh, this one is a Disney Plus streaming one in the Star Wars universe, The Bad Batch. It's still currently going, so I can't, like, give you the synopsis of the whole thing, but I can tell you right now, I'm absolutely loving it. I am annoyed that I have to wait every Friday to watch a new episode. I think I said this last time, but what is the point of building up a binge culture just to be like, nah, you can't binge that? Why? Why not? What's okay, sorry, didn't mean to yell. I'm really enjoying the Bad Batch Disney Plus. The next thing, Love, Death, and Robots. So this is a Netflix anthology series. It's an animated anthology series where basically everything is done with like CGI. There are some different like um, animated techniques that are used here and there, but a lot of it is CGI. And so the first installment that came out, I really liked it, but I had like one major criticism about it, and it was just like a lot of unnecessary gratuitous sex and violence. I felt like a lot of the animators were just hyped by this idea that they could create super realistic images and decided to just, I don't know, animate sex. It was kind of stupid. The stories that weren't filled with gratuitous sex were really great. And so the overall collection was awesome. So I was so excited when I saw that they were releasing another collection. And the second collection, so much better. N not a whole bunch of gratuitous sex. My only complaint about the, the, the second installment was the last story was kind of morbid. You know, to each song, everybody's into their things. I get 
what they were going for didn't sit well with me but still i loved the series so if you don't mind some adult content if you're really interested in different styles of animation unique storytelling because that's what this is it's, it, you have to be a lover of stories to um watch a series like that and really and truly appreciate it so love death and robots on netflix recommended not for the family <laughs> for those who are really into um, storytelling and animation. Now here's something for the family on Netflix, Finding Ohana. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that I didn't have high expectations for this, not for any particular reason, like it looks like a perfectly good movie, but in my mind, seeing the trailer for Finding Ohana, I felt like it was a Hawaiian remake of The Goonies. And there's a certain extent to where that's kind of true. I mean, you have these kids who are trying to save their home by looking for a treasure. I mean, that's the premise of the Goonies. You have these kids who are, they're trying to save the Goondocks and they go look for this treasure. So there was a lot of similarities just like on the like very surface of it, but that quickly went away and I was very much corrected. And it's not just some Goonies knockoff or re remake. It's a really good family story. It's, it's part of their rep representation matters collection. So um, it was really good. I was pleasantly surprised and, you know, shame on me for being judgmental. Okay. Uh, the next one is uh, A Monster Calls. This is currently streaming on Netflix, but it could also be streaming somewhere else. I don't know. Um, it came out a while back. Um, Liam Neeson is the voice of the tree. I did not figure that out right away. It's a tree monster. Anyway. Um, this, my husband heard someone talk about it on a podcast and he's like, you should watch it. He does that to me. He'll, he wants to know about certain things, but he doesn't want to watch them. So he'll be like, here, you watch that. Cause he knows that I, I'll pretty much watch anything and then tell you, oh, it was awful or tell you that it was great. Like I, I like to watch things even when I know sometimes that I'm not going to like them just for the experience. But there, I do draw the line sometimes. There are certain things I'm just like, nah, I ain't watching that. So anyway, he was like, you should watch it. And I watched it, and it wasn't bad. It was just, I don't know. It wasn't what I had expected. I thought the graphics were really good for, you know, when the movie came off and the way they kind of um, talked about grief and, you know, dealing with it. I thought was there was so much about this movie that was really good. So don't get me wrong. I guess because my husband, he does this sometimes, you know, he heard about it on this podcast and had, had portrayed it to me in a certain way, I gotta stop listening to him. And so I was kind of disappointed, but still not disappointed. So if you wanna check out A Monster Calls, it, it's really great, especially, you know, if you are dealing with grief or a loss or something like that, and you want a movie to maybe kind of inspire you or something, I think this would be good for that. So I'm almost to the end. Another one on Netflix that I thought was pretty good was The Mitchells vs. The Machines. Here's something about me in case you haven't figured out from this list or any previous list. I like robots. I don't know why, but I freaking love me some robots. So <laughs> this is um, a family-friendly robot movie, and it was really cute. Um, it's animated, and it's about a quirky family. I love the fact that this quirky family compares themselves to their, like, perfect neighbors. And it's literally, um, what's, the, oh my goodness, what is wrong with my brain today? <laughs> it's, it's, um, oh, the singer and his model wife. <laughs> I have got to do better. You know what? I'm just going to put it on the screen somewhere because I am drawing a, I cannot remember people's names. And they're like common names. I just, I don't know what's wrong with me. So anyway, they compare themselves to this like model family and in real life they're being voiced by literally a model family. The guy is a famous singer, she's a famous model, they're, you know, social media stars, all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I don't know what's going on with my brain. The last thing that I'm currently watching, haven't finished it, so I can't give you the complete rundown on it, is the Loki series, which is a Disney Plus streaming. So, like I said, the streaming situation is just getting out of hand um i i don't even know what to say about it you know <laughs> but i'm curious to know have you seen any of these did you like any of them did you hate any of them because it's all good if you did i mean 
you don't have to like everything that I like. Um, if there's something you would like to recommend me, I, I would love to have recommendations. My nephew is trying to um, introduce me to some new anime. He was shocked to find out that I actually have watched quite a bit of anime. He was like, you watch anime? And I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> so I may be watching some anime to um, connect with my nephew on that level. So anyway, um, that's what I've been watching. Have you seen it? And uh, until next time, guys, stay safe. Bye for now.